Hey everybody! In this month's gel press video, I am going to be making a fun piece of Thanksgiving decor. I'm going to make this little honeycomb pumpkin with gel press prints. So I'm going to be using some radiant watercolor on top of paint just to give me two different colors basically for the front and back of each circle that is going to make up the little honeycomb. You can use any print that you have laying around for this. You just do want a little bit of contrast between the two colors that you use for this. Now since I'm using watercolor, I am putting down a thin layer of white paint. I like the Liquitex Basics and I'm just getting that down to sort of be a substrate for the watercolor because watercolor would just beat up if I put it directly on the gel press plate. And what I'm going for is a sort of a pink color, a warm pink color on one side and a yellow lighter color on the other side. And I'm going to do that just with a combination of inks and stenciling. Since the honeycomb structure will sort of hide the print, you don't need to spend a lot of time making elaborate patterns on these gel press prints. You just want to basically get a little bit of color and some interest with a stencil, and that's what I'm going to be doing here. So I have several stencils. Of course, this is like the classic Charlie Brown sort of pattern. And I'm just lifting paint with that a little bit. This is going to be for the yellow side. Nothing fancy, nothing too advanced. It's just really about color and texture. And the white paint with the watercolor also gives the paper a little bit of body. And that's what you want when you're putting together this ornament. It does need to be a little bit sturdy. This is part of our holiday tutorial blitz at Split Coast Stampers. This project is based off a stunning ornament tutorial by Becca Feakin. And this year we're taking our top 10 tutorials and we're revising them with a little different twist on the sample. So hers was an elegant Christmas ornament. And mine is going to be this cute little pumpkin. Since the pumpkin will be on a place setting, I really only have to do half of the full ornament that she did in her tutorial. And so it's a little bit quicker to put this together. You just have half the number of pieces. So here I'm putting down another layer of the white. Liquitex Basics, and I'm going to try to create the other colors and other patterns for the other side of the pumpkin. So I'm going to speed this up just a touch. I'm not really doing anything new in this part except what I'm doing with the color. And like I said, I wanted a warmer pink, so I've blended pink and orange together for this part of the little pumpkin. And I'm getting two prints out of each. So you'll see when I go to put it together, you really don't need very many of these little circles to complete this. So I'll repeat this process again. Actually, after I put my pumpkin together, I realized I probably could have had even a little bit more contrast than I did because gel press printing is not always an exact science, I couldn't really replicate some of the colors that I was getting. And so some of my pink ones actually ended up being a little bit more yellow and some of my yellow ones ended up being a little bit more pink. But you'll see that it's pretty no matter what you do in the finished product. Now I'm switching it up a little bit here. I'm going to use some golden fluid acrylics with a little bit of gold because that just said Thanksgiving to me. I thought that would be a fun addition to the pink side along with these leaves, which I think are just gorgeous. I'll link you to the stencils that I used below. 
I wanted this leaf texture to show on some of the outer edges of the pumpkin. And it's so pretty. And even the pickup print with the open spaces goes really nicely on top of one of the pink prints that I had printed earlier. So overall, even though the texture won't sort of be right in the center of your project, you are going to get that thematic Thanksgiving feel from the presence of the little Charlie Brown stripes and the leaves. It'll be subtle, but it'll be there and it'll be all the things that I love about this time of year. Now, I still have my little ghost um, fingernails on for this Thanksgiving video, but that's okay. I loved my ghosts and I didn't want to take them off of my fingernails. <laughs> so now I've moved on to some more fall and winter themed nails. I'll do a few more of these prints because mostly I'm addicted to the way this gold looks on my gel press. It's so much fun and it's so beautiful with some of these fall stencil images that I'm using today. I love these stencils in particular for a very Virgo reason. Each stencil actually has the name of the stencil printed on the stencil. So when I'm going to blog, I can just take a peek at it and I have what I need. So here are the prints. And what you want to do is take, I used an oval infinity die. And this is about the size that I used. And I just glued two prints back to back. And you can see what I mean. One side is more yellow and the other side is more red. So the when you're folding these in half, and this is just like a little mock-up that I did, whatever color is on the inside is gonna be the most dominant color. So I've folded these so that the yellow's on the outside, and I'm going to show you how to put these together. I drew myself a little guide for glue dots on my grid paper. And I'll show you how that works. So with every single circle, you're going to repeat this with every circle. You will place glue dots in an alternating pattern. So on the inside, when you're folding it closed, you're going to put three glue dots down, one in each corner, which isn't really a corner if it's an oval, but you know what I'm talking about. And then one at the bottom. So every circle that you make, will be held shut with three glue dots in this exact position. And for me, I just found it easier to have that guide on my grid paper to help me get them in the right place. They do add a little bit of dimension, so you do want them to be in the right place. And then once you have that closed, you'll want to burnish it a little bit. I'm using my Teflon bone folder. You really want that glue dot to make good contact because it will be holding the entire honeycomb shape together. Now on that same circle, the next pattern is going to be the two in between the three that you put down on the inside of the circle. So you'll add one where each of those little arrows is, and this is what will hold two folded circles together. So hopefully that makes sense. And then you do the same thing. Add your circle and just make sure that the lines, the top folds line up because that'll give you the most pleasing shape in the end because it'll be very symmetrical. Now I will burnish these little glue dots again. And then again, this is the inside of the circle. So I go back to the pattern that has the three dots, one at each side at the top and one at the bottom. I found it easier to pick my colors. So knowing that yellow was going to be on the outside and the pink was going to be on the inside, I found it easier to just pick all my colors after I cut the ovals out and glued the two prints together so they were back to back and have them all folded so I didn't have to think too much <laughs> at this point. So you can see how that is going to come together after you've done that on every single circle. And it's really fun. And I'm glad I did the little mock up because it really helped me understand how it worked. So, this is something fun that you can do with your gel press prints now for the holidays. I hope you've enjoyed this.
Thanks so much for watching.